So multiclassing is the way to go at high levels in Baldur's Gate 3 and a lot of you guys actually inspired me to create possibly my favorite spellcaster build in the entire game. This ladies and gents is the machine gun sword lock. At least that's what I think it's called. But essentially this build right here has insane damage, lots of actions every single turn and we can destroy enemies like 10 times over before they even have a chance to react. Plus, it has a lot of survivability, lots of cool things going on for it, so we're gonna dive right in with everything you need to know about it. Now, this build is going to make use of three different classes, including Warlock, Fighter, and Sorcerer. We're gonna go 2 and 2 into Fighter and Warlock, and then the remaining 8 points all the way into the Sorcerer class. And the reason for that is because all of these have extra ways to regain actions every single turn, and this is going to let us cast our abilities, especially Eldritch Blast and Fireball, multiple times. Plus, we're gonna use Haste to gain even more actions per turn, even like batter buffs over there, increase the damage on our Eldritch Blast and many more abilities here that will just make us a god, basically. So this is the upgrade path. I'm gonna use Will as an example over here. And now we can start with the fighter, which would be nice because we get that heavy armor proficiency. However, we're not gonna use any heavy armor because there is a special non-light armor in the game, a robe of sort that will further provide us a charisma modifier so instead we're gonna start with the warlock and start with two points into it from this point on we're simply going to choose the eldritch blast and the second skill can be a blade ward or it could be maybe a bone chill if you want to avoid enemies getting healed yeah that can definitely work really well we're gonna go with the fiend and that's because we have the dark one's blessing this is going to provide us some extra temporary hit points every time we take down an enemy which happens very often with this one so we kind of have a bit more survivability we also have armor of agathis which helps us a lot if enemies attack us they receive cold damage and it also helps us a bit more to survive um, you can also go with the arms of Hadar if you want to, however, in this case, I'm going to just swap this for the Hex. This is an amazing ability to have, you can debuff enemies' constitution or charisma, I guess, and this is also going to provide us a 1d6 necrotic damage for every single source of damage that we deal. So for example, if we use Eldritch Blast, we will add 1 to 6 points of extra damage for each of the three or even four separate blasts that that skill does and this will work for literally everything from this point on the ability score will look something like this so charisma is going to be our main stat we're going to try to pump that to 16 or maybe even 17 if you're early on and can get that um, hair from the hag and pump it up to 18 right away Otherwise, 16 points in Dexterity, which is going to be perfect because we're going to pick Draconic Bloodline a bit later since we don't use any armor. So that's plus 3 extra AC, plus 2 from the shield so we can easily reach 18 early on. And it's also going to help us a bit with initiative. Constitution 14 so we don't fail our constitution saving throws. Plus it helps us survive a bit better. Everything else doesn't really matter. Just pick whatever you want. Meanwhile, the second Warlock level is going to be our final level in this class and we can pick either Hellish Rebuke, which is a nice reaction to have that will also further scale up with the fire damage we get from the Sorcerer class, or you can go with the Expeditious Retreat, which helps you a bit more with just disengaging from enemies. Either of these work just fine. The most important here are going to be the Eldritch Invocations. We're going to pick Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast, and this is going to buff the damage on our Eldritch Blast as now it scales up with our Charisma. And at level 20 Charisma, that means plus 5 extra damage for each of the beams of the Eldritch Blast. Plus, having them thrown back helps a ton with positioning and either like putting them in one place to take them down later or just throwing them off buildings or something. At character level 3, this is when we're gonna pick the fighter class and unfortunately there's not gonna be anything in the fighting style for this particular build. Defense would have worked nice, however, that extra AC point would have only worked if we use armor. However, the robes we use aren't armor, so it doesn't work. Maybe great weapon fighting if you want to also incorporate melee in this build, but otherwise it's whatever. What we're here for is actually the second level for the fighter class, because this is going to give us the action surge, and this will add an extra action to use this turn. So this is how we're going to be able to cast up to four spells in the same turn between this haste and the quickening spell that we're gonna see in just a little bit now once we reach character level five this is when we can finally switch to the sorcerer we have two points into fighter and two into warlock 
now we're gonna invest all our remaining levels into the sorcerer class now here i recommend getting lights because this is going to synergize very well if you don't have another source of light with you with a special ring that will further debuff enemies damage also light them up and even deal more damage with a second ring that we're gonna cover in the item section Otherwise, Ray of Sickness, Ray of Frost, Blade Ward all work really well for various reasons and even like damage mitigation against melee damage. But uh, what's important here is once we get to the spells, we get two good options early on, Chromatic Orb and Magic Missile. However, I kind of like switching one of them up for the Shield Reaction Skill. So this adds a plus 5 to your AC once somebody attacks you for the remaining duration of that turn so this helps quite a lot to make you much harder to hit now otherwise we also have the subclasses and the choice here will be draconic bloodline because we have draconic resilience armor class is increased to 13 when we don't wear armor and we will not because the robes and items we have equipped technically do not count as such plus we get an extra hit point per level as we level up so at level 12 i believe we will have about 130 hp about like 20 ac so we are quite tanky otherwise our dragon ancestor can be anything here i usually go with the red fire because we're just gonna have fireball later on that we also want to further scale up with our charisma so this helps with that sleep can also work but it's just a matter of preference now at sorcerer level 2 or character level 6 is when we get our class passives and in this case we're gonna go with the meta magic distance and twin spells now these aren't going to completely make or break this build they will just be helpful over there if you want to like multicast and affect multiple targets or if you want to shoot from very far away quickening spell will be the most important but this comes in a couple more levels once we reach character level 7, this is when we get access to stuff like Misty Step, Invisibility, Scorching Ray, even Blindness, which can work really well. However, I don't recommend Misty Step if you can already get the Legendary Boots that gives you the version of the Misty Step that only requires the bonus action and not consume a spell slot. So that can be much better and you can keep the spell slots for yeah, just using your attacks and whatnot. Otherwise, pick whatever you want over here. In my case, I went with the blindness. This is also when we get the second or well, the third meta magic, which is going to always be the quickened spell. This will let us cast our spells as either an action or a bonus action. So we can pop this off when we consumed our actions and instead make our Eldritch Blast to consume our bonus action instead, which is going to let us cast it one more time. Very, very helpful. Otherwise, pick whatever you want here as you see fit. At character level 8 and sorcerer 4, this is when we can pick some other spells that we didn't get before. Maybe now you can implement a Scorching Ray or a Mirror Image, maybe Invisibility depending on what you picked before this. But this is also when we get to choose our feat. So one of the first feats I recommend is either Charisma if you didn't get it from the Hag and you want to push 18 so that your modifier is better. Otherwise, we're gonna definitely want Warcaster at some point, either now or the second time we get a feat because this is going to give us that advantage on saving throws on concentration spells. So this is going to be very important if you want to keep up the Hex or the Haste since both of them are concentration spells. You don't want to get pulled out of them and get the debuffs, especially from the Haste. You definitely do not want that. And uh, yeah, speaking of that, once we reach character level 9, this is when we get both Fireball as well as the Haste in the same level. So you can pick Fireball right here and we can replace Chromatic Orb since fireball kind of does the same thing here with the haste ability which is how we're gonna make our build almost complete from this point on you're kind of 90 percent where you want to be with your character everything from this point on is just like the cherry on top and yeah besides that with the haste we can just pop this off at the beginning of the fight this is going to now give us an extra action slot over there that we can use and then we can just cast abilities, about three of them in the first turn, but in the next turn we're going to be able to cast four of them between this, Action Surge, and Quickened Spells. From here at level 10 we get two more subclass passives, including Elemental Affinity Damage, so this will buff that damage on our fire, including Fireball, Hellish Rebuke, and any other source of fire damage we have, plus it gives us some nice resistances over here if we want to. 
This is also when we can pick some other very interesting tier 3 spells. Gaseous form can be amazing both for just exploring but also doing combat. You can even like squeeze through very tight places with this. Um, counter spell could be really good if you want to really be annoying against enemy spellcasters but it will consume a um, level 3 spell slot. So go with the one that fits your build the best. Level 11 comes in and we're gonna have some other level 3 spell slots here. We will obviously pick the Wall of Fire. This is an excellent concentration spell, but it does deal that fire damage that does benefit from our Charisma modifier. So that's what I'm going to pick here. And finally, at level 12, this is when you can go with maybe a Confusion. Maybe now you can add that Counter spell or maybe something different. Most important here will be the final feat that you can pick. And in my case, I went with the extra points into Charisma. Now, as far as the items go, here is what I have. I am using the Birthright for the plus two to Charisma. You can buy this from the Sorcerer Sundries, and it also increases our Charisma um, max point to 22. So if we use this and also the Mirror of Loss, once we go to, um, I believe, the House of Grief, you can get it up to 24. So that's, I believe, plus seven extra damage for each of the Blasts of the Eldritch Blast. So that's quite insane otherwise we also have this robe not sure exactly where i got it from but it gives me a plus one point to spell attack rolls so that's quite nice however the most important will be the potent robe this is going to give us the gregarious caster which makes our cantrips to deal additional damage equal to our charisma modifier so it's essentially the same one as the invocation we got that already gave a charisma modifier to our Eldritch Blast. So we double that, which means we get a plus 5, a plus 6, or a plus 7, depending on your Charisma, for every single Eldritch Blast hit. So that's at the very least between 16 to 18 damage, no matter what, as long as you hit it, plus the attack roll that the skill already has. And you can even add a Hex in the mix and get 1 to 6 extra damage on top, as you will see in just a little bit. I also recommend getting the Gemini Gloves from the Devil's Fear vendor once you reach the Baldur's Gate city, as this is going to give you this very interesting ability that lets you target an additional creature with your abilities, and the same target can be um, chosen once again. So what this means for Eldritch Blast is that you get another charge for it, so instead of just three beams, you can shoot four of them, including on the very same target. So this is going to provide you a nice boost of damage over there that works just as well and the same as the other three that you already have. But this is going to be, I believe, on a short rest kind of cooldown, so you can't use it like all the time. Otherwise, disintegrating Nightwalkers from Act 1, this gives us that bonus action Misty Staff so that we don't consume any spell slots. Also, the Marco Hashkir, which is a really interesting staff, we get some spell save DC over there, which helps us quite a bit but we have arcane battery which is most important so this lets us cast a spell without consuming a um, spell slot this is going to be very helpful if for example you start a fight and you're going to cast a haste this one consumes a level 3 spell slot but if you have the battery it does not consume it and you can keep it maybe for a i'm not sure a fireball later on or maybe something that deals a lot more damage and not waste it on just this but since Will is a human, he can also equip shields. I went with this version. It has plus 3 AC, though there's also a rare variant that I believe you get from Shadow Hearts side mission that also gives plus 3, and that is a blue variant instead. So you can reach 20 AC with just this. Outside of this, we have the Amulet of Greater Health for that 23 into Constitution. This is what you get from the House of Hope, and it helps a ton to avoid losing my concentration and just be more tanky helps a ton with that however we also have a coruscation ring which is going to work really really well with this one the only problem is that i don't have the other ring from at the end of act 2 that further provides extra damage if i illuminate targets so this gives me arcane radiance when i deal damage spell damage while i myself am illuminated by a light source I can inflict Radiant Orb upon the target. So just to show you how insane this is, we can cast a Source of Light on our character and then just use any spell on an enemy which is going to place a Radiant Orb 
the buff on them this is going to further light them up so you and your other characters will almost never miss it and on top of that it's also going to reduce one point of its attack roll and that can actually stack for each of the spell hits so something like the eldritch blast can immediately give it like a minus six or minus eight in one single blast which is just insane the only problem is i don't have this ring right here from chapter two in the temple of shar which would have further added some extra damage if the target was illuminated but it is what it is maybe on the next playthrough otherwise this is how the build looks like it's absolutely insane so machine gun is definitely an understatement here what you want to do at the start of the fight is immediately add that battery activate the battery and place a haste on your character this is going to increase your actions to two instead of just one from this point on in the first turn alone you already have three attacks and you probably don't want to consume action surge just yet because on the next turn this is when you get four full blasts and attacks with four different abilities so this includes two from the main actions that the haste also gave you one then you can use quickening spell to make your eldritch blast or other abilities consume your bonus action instead so that's going to be three and then you can just press action surge from the fighter class and have one more action to use on any spell you want to maybe another damage maybe another firewall maybe an eldritch blast you're just going to destroy absolutely everything so this is how the build looks like obviously if there's anything attacking you you have hellish rebuke to just react back you can also use counter spell you can use that shield to increase your ac until the end of the turn so overall really really liking this one let me know down below if there's anything i missed in this or if there's any different kind of setup that you're running with that's similar to this i would definitely love to know it in the meantime thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video